Union Pacific's big 4884 articulated are an icon in American railroad. They were constructed by the American Locomotive Company in 1941. When the first one was being built, a factory worker wrote across the smoke box, Big Boy, and the name stuck. Of the 25 Big Boys built between 1941 and 1944, eight of them are still in existence. 4012 is on display at Steamtown National Historic Site in Scranton, Pennsylvania, under the care of the National Park Service. A cosmetic restoration of over $1 million was completed in 2021, making this the real showpiece for the museum. During the summer of 2023, I was able to visit with my son Carson and her good friend Chris, and we spent a lot of time scrutinizing this amazing piece of railroad technology. So, um, they, yeah, they got all the asbestos out from under the jacket. Yeah. And then just put the, but they put the jacket back on. Uh, they redid it. Yeah, no, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it look a lot more complete. Yeah, we've seen the, um, you know, the 4014, but you can't get, you know, when there's a million people, you can't get up close to it, mm -hmm. you know, and really get a good look at it. You get to watch it run, but you don't get to examine it closely. And I think this is the fourth big boy I've seen. I've seen the one in St. Louis, and I've seen the other one that's on display in Cheyenne that's in the park. Oh, cool. So this is in an articulated engine. Let's get a shot of that. I can't imagine what it was like to get this locomotive here. You know, get, get this thing across the country. Yeah. So far from its home territory, right? All right, so here's your cross compound air pump. I guess two of them, there probably was one on the other side, I think. And it's articulated. So that must be the exhaust from the front cylinders, yep. Exhaust from the front cylinders, and then this is the exhaust from the rear cylinders. That's the steam admission to the front cylinders. It all has to be flex joints. Check out this chain drive to the lubricator to run the mechanical lubricator. Yeah, so this is what you see when you first drive up is the big boy is here to greet you. And it is definitely an impressive machine and it looks good. They did a nice job with the cosmetic on it. Um, it looks looks ready to go. It's uh, it's very complete, very impressive. It's got to have a Worthington feed water heater. I saw the cold water, what I think is a cold water pump back there. No, it's got an exhaust steam injector. Well, I thought so too. I mean, that's well. That's what's a, that centrifugal pump for? To uh, supply water to it. It's it's over on the other side. Well, I knew it had an exhaust steam injector, but I, I don't really know how those work, I guess. Yeah, well, because it's <coughs> above the tank level, I think you need that pump to get the cold water up there. Oh, gotcha. That's weird. I've never seen that arrangement. Typically, you see them... Is that what this is? The cab. Yeah, yeah, that's the exhaust steam So that's injector. the exhaust steam injector? Yeah. Okay. And so all that cold water pump does is uh, force cold water up there, and then this puts it into the boiler. Okay, and uses steam, uh, exhaust steam, in order to put it in the boiler. Yeah. And look at the, so yeah, then you got that reach rod here going all the way back to the cab to turn that on. Okay, I've heard about exhaust steam injectors, but never really, never, I just assumed it was like a regular live injector with just runs off exhaust steam. So it's yeah. kind of its own contraption. Well, because you've got like an automatic crossover, if you're sitting at a station and you want to put water in, it'll switch over to live steam. And then as soon as you get exhaust pressure, it'll switch over back to exhaust steam. So they're, yeah, they're a lot more complicated than a regular injector. Okay. For the yeah, there's a starting valve for the, for the injector up there, for the exhaust steam injector. You can see it right Okay, that's there. the start. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And then there was a regular live uh, lifting injector on the engineer back, side. Yeah. yeah, the Nathan 4000. Continuous blowdown of some sort? I think that's just a uh, muffled blowdown. 
you see how it, the, it's just plumbed up there. I think you've got a separator. Uh -huh, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So that's probably what they use the majority when they go on the road, and then this is like an emergency or a clean out. Probably. Oh, check out those fold down steps. That's kind of different. All right, and there is your stoker screw to feed the coal from the tender up to the firebox. This one's still a coal burner. The 4014, of course, has been converted to oil. Centipede tender. Very unusual tender arrangement. Union Pacific had a lot of these, but I don't think too many other railroads had anything like it. A steam heat trunk. So that right there, okay, you used to call those elephant trunks, but that's for connecting your passenger cars to provide steam heat. I didn't know that they ever set big boys up for passenger service. Well, that spring band is sh shifted. Not a big deal since it's not going to go anywhere. What's the 168 volt? All right. Let's see here. So the 4884 is the wheel arrangement, four pilot wheels, two sets of driving, eight driving wheels, four trailing wheels. Mm -hmm. What's the 168? The 168. I do not know off the top of my head. Is the, it for the tender? I'm not sure. The 23 and 3 quarters over at 32 represents... That's, 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 that's um, how many pounds of pressure? No. Is that, it how many pounds of pressure or uh, traction or the pulling power? No. Nope. Uh, what's it called? Uh, tractive effort. Yes, tractive no, effort. No, that's not the tractive effort. That's the cylinder size. Oh. So that's the cylinder diameter well, is 23 and 3 quarters. Because over here you have the one big 32 on the bottom. And then you have the two 23 and 3 fourths on the top. Right? Yeah, the 23 and 3 fourths is the diameter of the pistons, of the cylinders. And that's a big fireball. But you would have to, so to start it off, somebody would have to, have to climb in there and fill the coal bed to yes. start with in order to, to light it off so to get, to help to get your steam up before yeah. you could run the stoker. So right. Or unless you guess you had um, shop steam or something, yeah. then you could run the stoker off of shop steam. Yeah, but to light it off from cold, somebody had to crawl in there and shovel the coal forward. And you'd have to wait till the steam engine was completely cold, though. It's like you couldn't restart it like that if it was still a little warm. <coughs> right. You'd have to do all the shop steam. You could, you could put somebody in there. You could die. Right. So three safeties on this side, and you think there's... There's probably three more on the other. I didn't notice when we were over there. This is where the engineer steered. <laughs> those are for closing the ash pan, boys. 4014 doesn't have those. Huh? Yeah, because it's an oil burner now. Oh. And, it didn't even, and it didn't even just keep them for looks? Nope. At 1,189,500 pounds and 132 feet long, Big boys are considered to be the largest steam locomotives ever built in the world. With 300 pounds of boiler pressure, they can produce 135,000 pounds of tractive effort, with around 6,000 maximum horsepower and reach speeds of 80 miles per hour. Oh, whoa. <laughs> That's a pretty spacious cab. That is crazy. Okay, take a step in. Oh, oh my god. This is huge. It is. I wonder if projects we're going to have to work on is getting like a, uh, a diagram or something to show people what all the controls are and some labels up here. Mm hmm. It's the always something more to do. The throttle's vertical. Yes. That's so cool. Well, it's a front end throttle. So that right. so there's the rod that runs all the way along the outside. We looked at that on one of those yeah. engines at uh, uh, Sugar Creek. Mm -hmm. 
and then this and the throttle itself is in the smoke box yeah. built into the superheater header so there's the throttle that's the reverser yep uh-huh yeah, we're missing a couple of handles in here yes injector control yep okay is it still curved no for the injector to put water in the boiler okay the stoker controls are over here. See, here's your main stoker feed okay. to control the steam to the jets. Mm -hmm. And then these ones that control probably the individual fans to fan yeah. it out. Chris, you know more about that than I do. I've never really worked on cold. What about the speed the cold goes into the jets before it gets to the jets? That okay. controls the speed. That's, that's, that's main jet. Okay. So you've got, you're, you're absolutely right. Each one of these is kind of a fine tune. You can see this says left front. So if you want, uh, well, basically you've got to run uh, both of these in conjunction. So I'm pretty sure this is your stoker motor. Um, and so as you want, if you want more coal in, you'll pull, you'll open this valve a little bit more. But you've also got to spray that coal. Uh, now that you've got more, you've got to open up your stoker jets in order to spray that coal throughout the firebox. So you operate both of these in conjunction. And then if you see that you're not getting coverage in one part, you use these to, um, you know, kind of fine tune where the coal's going in the firebox. And then if you get, if you get a blockage or something, the stoker booster, you open that valve and that gets more pressure into the stoker motor to try and break up if you've got like a rock or something like that in there. Cool. Is that, so this lever here on the left, is that for the, um, for the exhaust, exhaust steam, steam injector. injector. So this would be your starting valve. Okay. And, and the water? Yeah. And then that's water control. Gauge, cluster would have been up there? Yeah. So Is you it would have, whistle? You would have had like, probably like stoker jet, stoker uh -huh. motor. You would have had that, that octagonal uh, Alesco exhaust steam injector gauge that looks really cool. You might have had an auxiliary uh, boiler pressure gauge. Over here. I'm not the, exactly sure what all they had here. Instead of the water glass, they have the. Um, well, the, the water glasses are missing. They're, they're yeah, the water glass would go right here okay. and there. So you have the water glasses, they're just not here. Okay. But yeah, this is the tricocks mm -hmm. that you also have. We talked about those the other day. Yeah. You know, so you open up, you know, you open yeah. up the valve, right? Mm -hmm. And then. Steam if, or water. Yeah, you get steam, steam or water. Steam or water. Uh huh. So three ways in order to check the water level in the boiler. And then it. Is the and two uh, water columns. So then is the bell rope missing or is it automatic? Oh, it would have been pneumatic. Okay. Uh, I guess the bell would have been somewhere on right. it's somewhere on your break. That's probably no, not that. Well there's the lift. Uh, uh, is, uh, is, is that the dynamo? No, that's the headlights. That's headlights. Okay. Yeah. I wish I could help Honestly, you. I don't know not sure. well else you guys do. You learned something. I think that's for cutting out. We've got to work on getting some kind of labeling system in here so people can see it. I'm not sure what that is. This? No. Yeah, no. Because no. that's just, I don't know if that's like. Which one are you looking at? Because I'm not familiar with eight at all. Yeah, I don't What's know. That? Behind the I think it's a window over there. I'm not sure. Hmm. No, that's not a window lever. Uh, that could be the sander. That's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, then if that's the sander, what's this? Uh, cylinder cocks, maybe. Yeah, that looks like cylinder cocks. That looks like the sander. Um, yeah, that handle right there. That's got to be. A, that looks like a drain. I'd say this. I'd say the manual. I'd say the engine brake. Engine brake, main train brake. I th you backwards. Yeah, oh yeah, engine brake and, and automatic brake. Yes, yeah. that's correct, sorry. Maybe this is a bell. It could be. Yeah. That'd be my guess. 18 had one like that. It just was just a, a valve. Mm -hmm. And then what are these three, these four right here? That is a great question. I have no idea. Airflow? I was, I was super uh, interested in that also. It's a big valve. Yeah, I'm not sure what that one is either. Oh, there's an even bigger one up there. Well, this one goes out to your turret. So that could be yeah. like steam supply for an injector, mm -hmm. um, your dynamo, and maybe that one is too. 
Maybe it just runs to something right under the. Oh, bracket. I wonder if that's steam heat. Oh. Oh yeah, that was. Yeah, I'll bet it, that's steam heat. Yeah. This is really great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hot up here. Yes. Hot up here. I mean, it's got a lot of good airflow. I mean, it is pretty open, so if you're moving, it wouldn't be too terrible. But right, you got the you got the summer, so to speak. <laughs> that ain't, that don't do a, not lot. Do a lot. Yeah, no, we've got those two, and it's it's not amazing. Can I open tr open the fire door? I could try. It. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah that's that's okay. That I've seen the inside. I saw the inside of the one in St. Louis. They had it had it open, and you could look inside. Okay. And um, shoot, I had apartments that were smaller than that <laughs> when I was in college. You know, like dorm rooms. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could put a. That's a studio apartment in there. It's huge. I have something we could look at sometime is fixing that open somehow and put a light in there and keeping it open, mm -hmm. so you know, people couldn't open and close it. But. Yeah, I would. Uh, that would be a nice addition mm -hmm. to the display because you normally you know, the stairs are here all the time so you normally have this open for people to come in and out normally in fact we've got we've attracted a few others yeah unless the weather is an issue right and certainly in the winter time it's closed all winter yeah so i mean that would be a nice part of the display is having that open with a light in it mm -hmm. yeah here's the tender oh, coal yeah. space again you know the size of an apartment a small apartment so then where would the, uh, the stoker be, right Right. There? Uh, no, we're walking on it. So this would be oh. open. Yeah, this would be open, and the stoker would be right below us. So they put a and panel over here. Come through. Yes. The centipede tender would hold 28 tons of coal and 24,000 gallons of water. I hope you really enjoyed this look at Big Boy 4012. And remember, yeah. this is a breakout video. I've got a more complete video of the locomotives of Steamtown elsewhere on this channel. So take a look for that and take a look for any future videos. Thanks for watching.